welcome back to Animal Liberation TV. So, um, this is the very first part in this series about Animals Betrayed Coalition. Okay, now this first part, I want to do something kind of like uh, a bit of ideology theory, but it is stuff relating very much about putting stuff into practice, it's all about doing stuff. And so, um, this whole series is basically um, about getting organised. Now, I want to read out um, an article, an essay, by Nesta Makhno, who I mentioned in my Ukraine episode, who I've started looking into quite a lot, because everything I read about him and that he's written, I generally uh, really like. Um, so, um, yeah, I think this is important, this piece, because you can either listen to this and think, uh, take it as a little bit of a history lesson, and in your own way try and extrapolate the ideas to things that might apply to uh, your way of looking at things. Or it might be that you take this essay and the framework in it and you apply it to it, if you're an anarchist, to your anarchist ideas now. And if you're not an anarchist, that doesn't matter because anarchist ideas can still, other people who aren't anarchists can still use anarchist ideas and listen to the ideas and solutions. <coughs> And so if you're not an anarchist and you specifically want to relate this uh, that I'm about to read out to the animal rights movement, you can replace things like, because when there's a greater power and an, and an underdog, um, is anarchist ideas always are relevant because they're against oppression, all anarchist ideas are against oppression. So you can apply... The mention of the Soviet, uh, the USSR, in this, uh, you can apply that as say MBR, and instead of the anarchist rebels, you could be talking about the campaigners and activists against MBR, or you could be talking about the whole animal rights movement against animal abuse. You know, so you can extrapolate these ideas um, and put them into your own sort of interpretation. But I think the ideas are so good that they really are worth reading out. Especially as a start, a very uh, the very start of this series. So this is an essay written by Nesta Macno in October 1926, and he'd led an anarchist. Well, he'd commanded an animal, uh, uh, an anarchist army of up to 110,000 anarchist troops, peasants in the Ukraine. Battles as part of the Russian Civil War exactly 100 years ago. Okay, so this is called The Struggle Against the State. The fact that the modern state is the organisational form of an authority founded upon arbitrariness and violence in the social life of toilers is independent of whether it may be bourgeois or proletarian. It relies upon oppressive centralism arising out of the direct violence of a minority deployed against the majority. See, that could be animal abusers against the animals. In order to enforce and impose the legality of its system, the state resorts not only to the gun and money, but also to potent weapons of psychological pressure. <laughs> With the aid of such weapons, a tiny group of politicians enforces psychological repression on an entire society, and in particular of the toiling masses, conditioning them in such a way as to divert their attention from the slavery instituted by the state. So it must be clear that if we are to combat the organised violence of the modern state, we have to deploy powerful weapons appropriate to the magnitude of the task. Thus far, the methods of social action employed by the revolutionary working class against the power of the oppressors and the, against the power of the oppressors and exploiters, the state and capital, in conformity with libertarian ideas, were insufficient to lead the toilers to complete victory, which is the same as us. We haven't had complete victory yet, have we? Certainly not. <coughs> it has come to pass in history that the workers have defeated capital. But the victory then slipped from their grasp because some state power emerged, amalgamating the interests of private capital and those of state capitalism for the sake of success over the toilers. 
The experience of the Russian Revolution has blatantly exposed our shortcomings in this regard. We must not forget that, but should rather apply ourselves to identifying these, those shortcomings plainly. We may acknowledge that our struggle against the state in the Russian Revolution was remarkable, despite the disorganisation by which our ranks were reflected. <laughs> uh. Remarkable above all in so far as the destruction of that odious institution is concerned. But by contrast, our struggle was insignificant in the realm of construction of the free society of toilers and its social structures, which might have ensured that it prospered beyond the reach of the reaches of the state and its repressive institutions. So the fact that we libertarian communists or anarcho-syndicalists fail to anticipate the sequel to the Russian Revolution and that we fail to make haste to devise new forms of social activity in time led many of our groups and organisations to dither yet again in their political and socio-strategic policy on the fighting front of the revolution. <laughs> well, all movements are cursed with dithering. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not immune to dithering myself. Uh, <clears throat> If we are to avert a future relapse into these same errors, when a revolutionary situation comes about, and in order to retain the cohesion and coherence of our organisational line, we must first of all amalgamate all of our forces into one active collective. Then, without further ado, define our constructive conception of economic, social, local and territorial units, so that they are outlined in detail. Free Soviets citizens it means and in particular describe in broad outline their basic revolutionary mission in the struggle against the state contemporary life and the Russian revolution require that okay so don't forget you can change all of the stuff to the animal rights movement if you want those who have blended in with the very ranks of the worker and peasant masses participating actively in the victories and defeats of their campaign must without doubt come to our own conclusions and more specifically to an appreciation that our struggle against the state must be carried on until the state has been utterly eradicated. They will also acknowledge that the toughest role in that struggle is the role of the revolutionary armed force. Yeah, because... No anarchist really wants to be fighting. They fight because they have to. Their sense of injustice and desire for freedom and equality overrides uh, living out the meagre wage slavery bullshit life that the capitalist state demands of you. Uh, it is essential that the action of the revolution's armed forces be linked with a social and economic unit wherein the labouring people will organise itself from the earliest days of the revolution onwards so that total self-organisation of life may be introduced out of reach of all statist structures. From this moment forth, anarchists must focus their attention upon that aspect of the revolution. They have to be convinced that if the revolution's armed forces are organised into huge armies or into lots of local armed detachments, they cannot but overcome the state's incumbents and defenders and therefore bring about the conditions needed by the toiling populace supporting the revolution so that it may be so they may cut all ties with the past and look to the final detail of the process of constructing a new socio-economic existence the state will, though, be able to cling to a few local enclaves and try to place multifarious obstacles in the path of the toiler's new life, showing the pace of growth and harmonious development of new relationships founded on the complete emancipation of humans. The final and utter liquidation of the state can only come to pass when the struggle of the toilers is orientated along the most libertarian lines possible when the toilers will themselves determine the structures of their social action. These structures should assume the form of organs of social and economic self-direction, the form of free anti-authoritarian citizens. The revolutionary workers and their vanguard, the anarchists, must analyse the nature and structure of these citizens and specify their revolutionary functions in advance. It is upon that, chiefly, that the positive evolution and development of anarchist ideas in the ranks of those who will accomplish the liquidation of the state on their own account in order to build a free society will be dependent. 
Okay, very interesting lessons and ideas about organizing, basically having a single platform, a single group, and encouraging people to fight actively amongst the many other messages there. Um, I don't want to paraphrase Great Nestor because I really like his writings. Anyway, that's this introductory episode. So I really hope that that's getting you thinking those words because uh, as Maccabee, the vegan rapper, says in one of his songs, we've had enough, organisation is the key. And that's what this series is all about, which is the first stage in Agenda 2022 about getting organised. And look, <laughs> these are just my ideas. I've got a fair amount of experience. I've spent a long time, mostly in the past, in the animal liberation movement. So uh, this, these are just my perspectives. I'm throwing them out there. Um, I'm not claiming to have all the answers or whatever else. Um, but... Uh, this is uh, what I'm calling a blueprint for animal liberation. Um, so it's basically, you know, always up for modification. It's always up for discussion. Um, it might be that it's not something that catches on, but it, yeah, I'm throwing it out there. So this is the first episode. Hope you got something out of it, and it's making you think about things. Take care.